أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فمن أظلم ممن افترى على الله كذبا أو كذب بآياته أولئك ينالهم نصيبهم من الكتاب حتى إذا جاءتهم رسلنا يتوفونهم قالوا أينما كنتم تدعون من دون الله قالوا ضلوا عنا وشهدوا على أنفسهم أنهم كانوا كافرين قالت خلو في امم قد خلت من قبلكم من الجن والانس في النار كلما دخلت امه لعنت اختها حتى اذا اداركوا فيها جميعا قالت اخراهم لاولاهم ربنا هؤلاء يضلون فاتهم عذابا ضعفا من النار قال لكل ضعف ولكن لا تعلمون صدق الله العظيم ايه نمبر 37 وي هاد اولريدي ستديد it gives us the picture what the angels of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to these unbelievers who associate others with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they come to take possession of their souls at the time of their death aina ma kuntum tad'una min dun where are those gods and goddesses whom you want to pray who do you used to pray besides allah قالوا ضلوا عنا وشهدوا على انفسهم انهم كانوا كافرين they will say they have just vanished from us gone with the wind and they will testify against their own selves that they were actually unbelievers rejectors of the faith قال ادخلوا في امم then they will say those angels now go and enter with those generations قد خلت من قبلكم with past before you min al jinn wal ins min al jinn from jinns and ins and, and humans finnar and you also enter with them in the fire kullama dakhalat ummatu la'anat ukhtaha whenever a generation will enter the hell fire of hell it will curse the previous one the like of it hatta idha daraku fiha jami'an when they will all be gathered in that fire of hell qalat ukhrahum leulahum the following one should say to the preceding one rabbana haula yadulluna over lord these are the people who led us astray one generation after the other the formal generation leads their offspring their sons and daughters in a direction so they will blame that they were our forefathers and they led us astray and they led us to this mis- misguidance fa adalluna they are who led us astray fatihim azaban zayfa min an-nar so give them double punishment from fire qala li kullin zayfun allah would reply for all of you are double for all of you you all of you will get, get the double punishment wala killa ta'lamun but you don't know because had your preceding generation led you astray you had also led astray the next generation which you left behind you so actually this is a circle going on vicious circle so for all of you the punishment will be doubled wa qalat ulahum li ukhra on this the previous one would say to the next generation فما كان لكم علينا من فضل you don't have any preference over us فذوقوا العذاب بما كنتم تكسبون now you must also taste this punishment and chastisement because of what you had been earning in the ladina kazabu bi ayatina verily those 
who belie our revelations, who reject and refute our revelations, وَاسْتَقْبَرُوا عَنْهَا and turn away from them due to arrogance and haughtiness. لَا تُفَقَّحُ لَهُمْ أَضْعَابُ السَّمَاءِ Gates of the heaven will not be, will not be opened for them. وَلَا يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ And they will not be able to enter Jannah. حَتَّى يَلِجَ الْجَمَلُ فِي سَمْ الْخَيَاتِ Until the camel passes through the eye of the needle. وَكَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And in this way, we give the reward or the recompense to those people who are guilty. Now there is a hadith according to Hazrat Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم once said that the soul of a sinful person will not be allowed to ascend to heaven but the soul of righteous person will be welcome. It seems from some of the traditions that the Jahannam will be on this very earth. So you know they will be punished here. They will not be able to ascend to the higher places because their souls are impure. The gates of the heavens will not be opened. And also of the believers whose good deeds were less than the bad deeds, they will also remain here till such time that their souls are purified in the fire of hell. And then they will also enter, you know, and they will ascend high up. So this, you know, this proverb, Hatta yanajal jamalu fi sabil khayat. This is actually to attach to something a condition which is impossible. Because it is impossible that a camel pass can pass through the eye of a needle. So it is impossible for these unbelievers that they can ever get out of the hell and enter the heaven or the paradise. And this has been used also by Hazrat Masih alayhi salam in another way. He once said, it is in the gospel according to Saint Matthew, that the wealthy people will not be able to enter the kingdom of heaven until the camel passes through the eye of a needle. Wealthy people, he said. Because you know, they are more engrossed in this world. Because they are in comforts and luxuries, they forget Allah. They are liable to forget Allah more than the people, you know, who are not so comfortable in this world. They anyhow call to Allah, pray to Allah. But you know these people, and because for them it is very difficult to come in the path of Allah and to bear the hardships for Iqamatuddin, to make jihad in the way of Allah. For the laborers, hard workers, already they are hard working. It's not very difficult to go to the field of battle also. But those who are accustomed to, you know, all the comforts, it's become very difficult for them. So he says that the wealthy people will not be able to enter the kingdom of heaven until camel passes through the eye of the needle. The same. لَهُمْ مِنْ جَهَنَّمَا مِحَادٌ وَمِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ غَوَاشٍ فَرْدِمْ for them there will be bed of hell, bed of fire in the hell. And in the same way the coverings, you know, the blankets will also be of fire. وَكَذَلِكَ نَجْزِ الظَّالِمِينَ And this is how we shall recompense the evildoers. And as, as a contrast, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا صَالِحَاتِ لَا نُكَلِّفُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا بُسْرَاحًا As for those who had believed, who had the real faith, and they had done and committed good deeds, and we don't charge any soul beyond its capacity. Then we shall judge a soul, we shall keep in our mind what capacity we had given it. What are the potentialities that were within it. And we shall judge everybody according to the potentialities that we had given it and the capabilities and the capacities. Now who are adjudged that they did what they could do and they pass that test. Ulaika Ashabul Jannah, they are the people of paradise, heaven, hum fiha khalidun, and they will remain there forever, forever. Wanadana ma fi sudurihim min rillin. These people who will be entering paradise or heaven, in this world, there was some, you know, ill feeling towards each other also. They are human beings. Somebody said something jokingly, but he took it seriously. So there is some ill feeling. 
Among the Mormons also, among the believers also, there could be these things. But Allah says when we shall make them enter in the paradise, then they will be admitted to the paradise. All the hatred and enmity will be taken away from their chests and their hearts. وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلِّنْ If there is any ill feeling, if there is any hatred and enmity, we shall take it out from their hearts, so that in Jannah they will be like brothers, having no ill feel, feeling over to each other. وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلِّنْ تَدْرِي مِنْ تَعْقِمُ الْأَلْحَارِ Beneath them, rivers will be flowing. وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي هَدَانَا لِهَذَا And then they will be all prayers to Allah and all thanks to Allah. They say, all thanks be to Allah and all praise be to Allah, who guided us to this place. وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَحْتَدِيَا We couldn't have guidance and reach this place. لَوْ لَا الْحَدَانَ اللَّهِ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had not given us the guidance. If he has not guided us, it's by his blessing that we have reached here. لَقَدْ جَاءَتْ رَسُولُ رَبَّنَا بِالْحَقِّ They will say, the messengers of our Lord came with the truth. Whatever they said, it came out to be true. وَنُودُوا And then they will be called, it will be proclaimed to them, أَنْتِلْكُمُ الْجَنَّةُ هُرِسْتَبُوهَا This heaven, this paradise, has been given to you in inheritance. You have inherited it. بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ Due to your deeds, what you have earned, what you have did. They will say it's all by Allah's bounty, by Allah's grace. We couldn't have reached it. We didn't have the right to it. We couldn't claim it on our deeds and actions only. It was all Allah's blessing that we have reached here. But Allah will say, no, it is, it is your deeds, your good deeds. You strive in our way. You spent your time, your money, your, your energies, your capabilities for my cause, helping me and my messengers. So actually, you have entered here and you have inherited this garden of heaven on the basis of what we have been doing. وَنَادَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ أَصْحَابَ النَّارِ And these people of the garden will call out to the people of the fire. And قَدْ وَجَدْنَا مَا وَعَدْنَا رَبُّنَا حَقَّهِ We have found what our Lord had promised to us to be true. Whatever the promises were given to us in Quran, at the tongue of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have come to find it that it is absolutely true. All these promises have been fulfilled to us. فَهَلْ وَجَدْتُمْ مَا وَعَدَ رَبُّكُمْ حَقَّهِ Have you also found what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised you to be true? قَالُوا نَعْمْ They will say yes. فَعَزَّنَا مُعَزَّنُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ Now a proclaimer will proclaim and announce between them اللَّعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ That the curse of Allah is on the evil doers, on the transgressors. الَّذِينَ يَسُدُّونَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Those transgressors who stop others, bar others from the way of Allah, want to stop them. Don't let them go in the way of Allah. وَيَبْغُونَهَا عِوَجَا And they try to twist it. The straight path of Allah, they want you to twist it. Or to find fault with it. يَبْغُونَهَا عِوَجَا can have two meanings. They want you to twist the way. So that it turns away from the right path. Or they, find, they try to find fault. Oh, no, no, this is not the correct way. They try to find faults with the right straight path so that they can take people away from the right path. وَهُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ كَافِرُونَ This is most fundamental, as I have been pointing out time and again. The fundamental thing is that they don't believe in Akhirah. They were unbelievers in Akhirah, in resurrection and the life of hereafter. وَبَيْنَهُمَا حِجَابٌ And between them will be a, a, a fasil, as we call it, rampart, separating the two. And we find this in Surah Al-Hadid. فَظُولِمَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِسُورِ اللَّهُ بَعْبٌ بَعْتِنُهُ فِي الرَّحْمَةِ وَظَاهِرُهُ مِنْ قِبَلِهِ الْعَزَابِ These people, you know, Ahlul Jannah, Ahlul Nahr, they will be separated by a wall, a very high wall, rampart. وَبَيْنَهُمَا حِجَابٌ وَعَلَى الْعَرَافِ رِجَالٌ يَعْرِفُونَ كُلَّمْ بِسِيمَاهِمْ On that rampart, on that high wall, there will be heights or towers, you know, as the towers used to be around the ramparts of the cities. 
And on those highs there will be some people. Yarifuna kullam bisimahum. Who will be recognizing all by their faces. Who are these people? Who are still neither in the Jannah nor in the hell. They are on the wall separating the Jannah and the hell. And on the towers they are sitting. They are the people, according, although there are so many opinions of the exegesis, Mufassirin, but you know, the one which is more accepted and in support of which there are traditions of the Prophet also. That is, that when you know the way, the acts and deeds will be weighed. There will be people and only those who believe. Only actions of those will be weighed in the balance who had believed. Who had not believed, they go straight to the, to the fire of hell. But the believers now, it will be seen whether their good deeds are more than the evil deeds. If the evil deeds are more, they will be sent to the hell. If good deeds are more, they will directly go to, to the heaven. But there will be people who will be balancing, you know, all the good deeds and the bad deeds are equal. So for some time they will stay in between, on that rampart, on that wall. And because they were, you know, in between the two, they knew each one. They knew people, you know, who were with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also, and people who were against him also. So they will be recognized all by their faces. Kullam besimahum. Vanada ashabal jannate. Now they will look towards the people who are in Jannah, who are in the heaven, and they will call out to them, Salamun alaykum. Peace be upon you. Lam yad khuluha. They would not have entered it up till now because they are sitting on the rampart. Wahum yat amun. Wahum yat amun. Yat maun. And they will be hoping and wishing to get into that place also, where these people have already reached. And then their eyes will be turned towards the people of the fire. They will pray to Allah, Oh Allah, save us. Don't make us along with them. Because they have up till now neither entered hell nor heaven. So they are hoping to get entry into the heaven. But you know when they see, maybe because, as I told you, between Khauf and Raja, man and Khauf and Raja, they will have in a hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, will admit us to this Jannah. But they will be feeling the fear also. Rabbana la taj'alna ma'al qawmi zalameen. Wanada ashabu al-arafi rijalan yarifunahum bisimahum. Qalu ma'agna ankum jamukum wa ma'akuntum tastagbirun. And these people, people on the heights, on that wall, separating the hell and the heaven. They will call out to the people in the fire. Jarifunahum bisimahum. They would be recognize them, recognizing them. For example, Abu Jahl. For example, anybody else. And they will call out to Magna ankum jamukum. Fama kuntum tastagdirun. Your jama. And jama can have two meanings here. Your jamiyat. Your numbers that you had many friends and many admirers and many people used to sit in your rooms etc and you have a, you had a hoard of wealth all these things would not save you from this fire of hell and all your haughtiness and all your takabur and all your arrogance has led you to this place on the other side on the jannah they will find belal who, who, who are the slave? They will find Musab, they will find Yasir, and so on. Abu Faki. They were the people whom they thought they are our medials, they are our servants, they are our slaves. Are they the people who are now enjoying, you know, the blessings of Allah in the heaven? About whom you thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never give them any mercy. How? They are the, they are the menials. They are the low-graded people. And why are they are low-graded? Because Allah had made them low-graded. If they are low-graded in this world, how can they go to, to heaven in the, in the, this world? That was their philosophy, their thinking, their arguing. How the people on Araf, on the heights of the wall, which is intervening between the Jannah and the, and, and, uh, hell. 
they will call and say, these people, we find them, La yanalahumur rabba, you thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not have any mercy upon them. Udkhulu al-jannata la khawfun alaykum wala antum ta'zanun. It has already been proclaimed to them, O you, O Bilal, O Yasir, enter Jannah, enter the garden. And wala khawfun alaykum wala antum ta'zanun. There will be no fear upon you, nor you will have to grieve. Wanada ashabun nari ashab al-jannah. And now the people of the fire will call out to the people of the garden. And afizu alayna min al Pour some water on us. Aw mimma razaqakum Allah. Or throw something from there to us. From what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided you. Some food, some water. Qalu inna Allah harramahuma ala al-kafirin. They will reply, no, we are sorry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has declared all these things forbidden for the unbelievers. We can't give you. Even if we want to give you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained us. In Allah harramahuma. Allah has declared them forbidden out of bounds. Alal kafirin. Alladheena takhadu deenahum lahabam wa laiba. Those who took their religion as a play and amusement only. They were never serious about these things. وَغَرَتْهُمُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا And the life of that world, life of the world, worldly life, it had deceived them, deluded them. فَالْيَوْمَ لَنْسَاهُمْ Today we shall ignore them, we shall forget them. كَمَا نَسُوا لِقَا يَوْمِهِمْ هَاغَا As they ignored and neglected and rejected and refuted and they didn't accept the meeting of this day. وَمَا كَانُوا بِعَيَاتِنَا يَجْحَدُونَ And because of their denying and refuting our revelations. وَلَقَدْ جَيْنَاهُمْ بِكِتَابٍ فَصَّلْنَاهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ هُدًا وَرَحْمَةً لِقَوْمٍ يُوْمِنُونَ And we had brought to them the book which we had explained fully and with knowledge and which was hudan, it was a guidance and mercy لِقَوْمٍ يُوْمِنُونَ for those people who believe. هَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا تَعْوِيلَهُ They are not waiting for anything except the end result. What will be the end result of this book? What will be the end result of the da'wah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What will be the end result of this world? يَوْمَ يَاتِي تَعْوِيلُهُ يَقُولُ الَّذِينَ نَسُوهُ مِنْ قَبْلْ قَدْ جَاتْ وَسُلُ رَبِّنَا بِالْحَقِّ When this end result will come before them, يَقُولُ الَّذِينَ نَسُوهُ then those people will say, who had ignored it, Qadjaat Rasul Rabbina Bilhaq, our messengers had come to us with the total truth. Fahallana min shufa'a. So are there any intercessors for us now? The only hope? We didn't accept the da'wah, the call. We didn't respond positively to the call of the messengers. We didn't believe in them. Now are there any intercessors? Fayashfa'u lana? So that they intercede for us. Or maybe we are sent back to the world so that we can do other than what we have been doing. Now if we are returned once to the world, we shall be doing absolutely different things. They have already destroyed themselves. And whatever concoctions they were doing, all things will vanish away. إِنَّ رَبَّكُمُ اللَّهُ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ عَيَّامِ Certainly your Lord is Allah, who created all the heavens and the earth in six days. Now these six days are not the days of our world, of this earth. It's one revolution of the earth, you know. And it becomes one day. One night, one day, and it becomes one. Actually, the, the one day of moon is something else. One day of Jupiter would be something, some, uh, have a different duration. One day of sun, because sun is also rotating. Round, you know, and it is going round some very big star also. So everything is rotating, and everything is moving. Kullun yajri yajri musamma. So now, Maybe there is a day of a galaxy. Then what would be the one day of the whole of the universe? We can't imagine. 
it can be millions and millions years of life of of you know our uh, calculations because in quran we find one day of allah is is according to your calculation equal to 1000 years and you know we find in the quran 50000 years also qana miqdaruhu 50 alf sana so there are different you know calculations and different sizes so what are the sizes of those six days in which this this kainat this this universe was created we can't know maybe what they call the scientists call the millenniums you know they are the six millenniums the six periods of time in rabbakum allah alladhi khalaqa samawati wal ardha fi sittati ayamin thumma istawa ala al arsh then he mounted and ascended the throne we can't know what is this throne you know arsh of allah is like yushilal an nahar he covers and he let the night cover the day yatlubuhu hasisa and it is you know following it in very you know haughty pursuit the day seeking it speedily was some size created the sun wal qamara and the moon wal nujuma and the stars musakharat in bi amri they are all subservient to his command whatever is commanded to him do them they are doing it ala lahul khalqu wal amr listen to him belongs the creation as well as, well as the commanding this ayah is very important in one way he has created something some sun some moon and he has set certain instructions for it which we call the laws of the nature there are some laws which are governing the movement of the sun there are a set of laws governing the movement of this earth certain set of laws governing the movement of the moon everything is obeying those laws so these are amr khalq and amr ala lahul khalq wal amr both belong to him it is not that he created but somebody else is controlling it's not that he is controlling and somebody had else had, had created creation and control both belong to him but in another sense this aya is most profound there are two levels of creation as i told you one level of creation is pre material creation when the souls were created matter was not created up till now souls are not material in the same way the angels are not material they are from light so actually this is the alam ul amr and in that alam in that world time factor is not present at all this this amr is kun fayakun he says be and it is done no time other is the alam ul khalq this world of creation material creation we should say here now this material creation always involves time a seed becoming a plant must take some time this conception in the womb of the mother but 9 months are required then the baby would be fit to be delivered so here it is time that is why you know in the creation of the universe and creation of the heavens and creation of the earth always quran says six days not kul fayakun this has not been created in that fashion inma amruhu idha arada shay'an fa inma yaqulu lahu kun fayakun that type of creation was the creation of the light original light which had no heat in it you know and that light you know that was pre material era of this creation and from that light were created the souls of the human beings and the angels so they are not material our soul is not material it doesn't belong to the, the to world of matter it is something from beyond then there was a big explosion in this light and that is the big bang and to this big bang our scientists have reached their researches and all these their calculations they have taken to that place but the science or the scientists can't be, go beyond that alam e amr is beyond their reach they can never know it because it is fundamentally different essentially different it's not the world of matter it's a pre material you you may call it so actually science can have can discuss and see and and you know know the things of the material world not before that 
and actually the souls of human beings and the angels, they belong to that period. And that is Alam al-Amr. Yasaluna ka ruh kuli ruh bin amr rabbi It is not khalq rabbi it is amr rabbi Alam al-khalq is something where time is always involved. خلق السماوات والارض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش يغشي الليل النهار يطلبه حسيسا والشمس والقمر والنجوم مسخرات بأمره ألا له الخلق والأمر تبارك الله رب العالمين Extremely benevolent is Allah The creator, the sustainer and the lord and the master of all the worlds العالمين World of matter and what should we call the other world? I can't say. But you know in Arabic, Alam al-Khalq, Alam al-Amr. In Amr, no time factor. If the time was, it was absolute time, not the serial time, not the passing time. The serial time which we calculate through by these motions. You know, we are calculating due to this revolving motion of the earth one day. We are calculating one year when the earth completes a circle around the sun. So these all steps of serial time, they are based on these revolutions and these, you know, revolvings and these, you know, movements of these planets. Absolute time, not related to any movement, it's something else. And they call it in philosophy, there are two types of time, absolute time and absolute time is dhar. It has some relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why the Prophet has been reported to have said, La tasubbu dhar, fa'inna dhara hu Allah. Never abuse dhar. Never blame the har. What you are attributing to the har is actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has some relationship. Absolute time is related to Allah. To this world of matter, it's all serial time, which is produced, the conception of which is produced due to these movements, revolving and taking these round, you know, all these things between the planets. So these are the things which must be kept in mind. Udru rabbukum tadarru'am wa khufya. Pray to your Lord. Keep on praying to Him. Calling upon Him. Tadarram wa khufya. With humility and in secret. Don't call Him with loud voices. He can hear whatever you say to Him in your heart. So why to call Him with loud voice? No need. The best prayer is which you are praying in your loneliness when you are alone, not showing off to anybody else talking to Allah alone, and you need not shout. Only what is needed is that you should be, you should be humble. And number two, secretly ask Him. But another dimension will be again, you know, mentioned. This, this dua has another dimension also. Verily, He doesn't like those who transgress the limits. And don't produce mischief. In the, in the earth. After it has been set right. وَدْعُوهُ خَوْفًا وَتَمَعَا This is the second dimension of dua. And you must call to him, pro to him, with khawf, with fear, and with tama, and hope also. بَيْنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْرَجَا So praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one, humbly, with humility. Number two, secretly. Number three, having hope that Allah will respond positively and accept my 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 uh, prayer and also fearing maybe due to my act due to my actions maybe allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rejects my prayer so these are the four dimensions of dua and dua about dua the prophet sallallahu has said at dua mukhul ibadah that is the essence of worship and in another saying he says Actually, prayer is the worship. Inna rahmatullahi qareebu bin al-muhsirin. Verily, the mercy of Allah is very near to those who do good deeds or who have reached the level of Ihsan. Both translations you must keep in mind. They have risen from the level of Islam and Iman to that of Ihsan. وَهُوَ الَّذِي يُسْرِ الْرِيَاحَ بُشْرَبْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَحْبَتِهِ and it is he who sends winds as glad tidings, heralding his mercy. The rain is coming. Hatta idha khallat sahaban siqalan. Until then, when they have carried a heavily laden cloud, suqnaahu le baladin mayyatin. We drive it towards the land 
towards a land which was dry, dry and which was lying dead. There's no greenery. The land is barren. No greenery, no sign of life. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the clouds there, and then you know it is raining there. Hatta idha aqallat sahaban siqalan suqnahu li badan il mayyatin fa'anzalna bihi bihi il ma and then we send down the water from it. Fa'akhrajna bihi min kulli samarat and with this water we bring out from this earth all the fruits, all types of fruits. Fazalika nukhrajul mawta in the same way we shall bring out from this earth the dead. Because the seeds were also there, but they were lying dormant. They were dead. Water came, and now those dead seeds, they become alive. They sprouted. Out of each seed, two leaves have up appeared. And this led to this greenery. In this same way, you will be lying dead, buried in this clay. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends rain, and He revives the, the dead earth, He will revive you. كَذَلِكَ نُخْرِجُ الْمَوْتَى لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ So that we are telling to you all this, so that you may be reminded. وَالْبَلَدُ الطَّيِّبُ يَخْرُجُ نَبَاتَهُ The good land, it gives its vegetation in the best of the ways. بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِ By the command of its Lord. وَالَّذِي خَبُسَ And which is bad. The, the, the earth doesn't have any fertility. لَا يَخْرُجُ إِلَّا نَكِدَا It doesn't bring out but very little. كَذَلِكَ نُسَرِفُ الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمِ يَشْكُرُونَ In this way we explain our ayat, our revelation for those people who are grateful. What does it mean? Rain is the same, but land is not good. It won't produce anything. Rain is the same, land is good, it's producing a lot. In the same way, if the nature of a person has perverted, Quran will not be able to bring out any good from him. If the nature of this person is correct, healthy, then Quran will, you know, enter into it and bring out, bring forth the good which is inherent in its soul. The same way as lands bad and good, in the same way the natures of people, either they are correct and healthy or they are perverted. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ We had sent Nuh to his nation. فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عِبُدُ اللَّهِ And he said to them, O my people, worship Allah. Now this O Budu has four directions, four dimensions at least. I don't want to repeat all these. Rather I want to keep this O Budu as it is. Because repeating all the four words, you know, that will consume much time. This is going to be repeated now time and again. Number one, worship, modes of worship, to show your reverence to someone whom you think to be God. This is one. Number two, obedience. You have to obey. That's the part and parcel of ibadah. Number three, love. You have to love Allah. And you must, you know, whomsoever you have accepted as God, falsely or correctly, you must love Him. And number four, serve Him. All these four words joined together go to make the sense of ibadah. So he said, Ya qawme budullah baalakum in lahim gairu. You have no God except him. You have to worship him, you have to love him, you have to obey him, you have to serve him. In the akhaf wa alaykum adab yawmi nazim, I fear on you that if you don't mend your ways, the punishment of a mighty day will take you, will overcome on you. قَالَ الْمَلَوَ مِنْ قَوْمِهِ The chiefs of his, of, of his nation said to him, إِنَّا لَنَرَاكَ فِي ضَلَالِ مُبِينَ We see you, we find you in a manifest error. You have been mistaken somehow. قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ لَيْسَ بِي ضَلَالَةٌ He replied, No, my people, I am not in error. وَلَكِنِّي رَسُولٌ مِّنْ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ on the other hand, I am the messenger from the Lord of all the worlds. Ubalikum risalati Rabbi. I am conveying to you the messages of my Lord. Bansaudakum. 
I am most sincere to you. I am advising you sincerely. Wa'alamu min Allahi ma'ala ta'ala moon and you don't know what I know from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That knowledge has not come to you. Ab ajib tu man jaakum zikrum min rabbikum. You are wondering that a reminder has come to you ala rajulim min zakarim min rabbikum ala rajulim min kum. To a man from your, among yourselves, a man of your nation, to him, a reminder has come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are wondering it. Le yunzirakum. And this reminder has come, what, what, what for? So that he may warn you. Wale taqtaku. So that you can have taqwa. You may have taqwa. You may be able to save yourselves. Wala allakum tuhamun. And so that mercy should be shown to you. Fakazabu. But they rejected him. Belied him, refuted him. So we saved and delivered him and those who were with him in the ark, in the big boat and ship that he made under the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This we will find in Surah Uhud, inshallah. And we drowned all of them who had belied our revelations. In the Unkanu Kaman Amin, surely they were they were the blind people. While Adi Nakhaw Huda. Now you know this nation was the first nation. Hazrat Inuwa Salam was the first messenger of Allah. He's noted. Before him we have on the record three prophets. Hazrat Adam alayhi salatu was a prophet, not a messenger. Hazrat Idris alayhi salatu was salam. He was a prophet, not a messenger. Hazrat Shis, alayhi salam, he was a prophet, not a messenger. The first messenger of Allah is Nuh, alayhi salatu was salam. Then you know the people who were saved with Nuh, three of his sons. So now the nations of the world are the progeny of three sons of Nuh, alayhi salatu was salam. Sam, Ham, and Yafis. And Quran only discusses the history of the Semitic nations who are the progeny of Sam, alayhi salatu was salam, who was one of the sons of Nuh. The other son, Yafis, his progeny migrated to the north, because the area which is you know today as Kurdistan, this is the place where the nation of Nuh, alayhi salatu was salam, was living. And perhaps the humanity was still that time restricted to this area only. And here came the flood, and the, you know, the ark rested with Judi, and it is somewhere where Armenia and Turkey and Russia, they go to meet, you know, that's the place where this jabal e is. And some, you know, pilots have seen a structure on the top of that mountain, which resembles a, an ark and a boat. But it has not, you know, been you know, discovered up till now. Maybe, because Quran says that we have preserved it as a sign. So that sign will come to light one day. But from that you know that place, now three sons of Nuh alayhi salatu was salam, their progeny spread. One went downwards toward the south, and these are the Semitic nations. Iraq, Syria, they were inhabited, and then the Arabian Peninsula. These, were, these are the Semitics. And the Yafis, sons of Yafis, they migrated across the mountain range of the Central Asia, and then to the left to the right. The European nations, the Russians especially, and the Chinese and Mongols, they are all progeny of Hazrat Yafis alayhi salatu was salam. And you know the middle, Ham, they went to west and to east. To east towards India, Indian subcontinent, and to west towards Egypt, etc. and Sudan. So they are the progeny of Hazrat Ham alayhi salatu was salam. Quran gives us the history mainly of the Semitic nations. Among the seven nations, after the people of Nu, arose this people of Ad, a very strong nation. So it, for, to them came Hazrat Ehud. While Ad in Akhahum Huda, and to Had, to the people, to the nation of Ad, we sent their brother, and his name was Hud, alayhi salatu was salam. Ya He said the same thing. Oh, my nation. Make ibadah towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be abs to, to him. And you have no Lord, no God except him. Afalata taqoon. So don't you have taqwa? Don't you want to save yourselves? Qal al-malaw ladhina kafaru min qablihi. Inna lanraka fi safahatin. So the people you know. Inna lanraka fi 
from his nation who were the chiefs, you know. They said to him, we, we find you in falliness. You seem to be, to have become a fool. And we think that you are lying. You are telling us a lie. Kala ya kome le sabi safati. They said, no, oh my nation, there's no folly with me. Walakini rasulum mi rabbil alameen. On the other hand, I am a messenger from the Lord of all the worlds. Uballe hukum risalati rabbi. I'm conveying to you the messages of my Lord. Wana lakum nasirun ameen. And I am for you a trustworthy advisor. Are you wondering over this? That a zikr, a, a reminding has come to you from your Lord, Allah Rajulim Minkum, through a person, on a person, from amongst you. So that he may warn you. Just remember, recall, when Allah, Allah Ta'ala made you the successors after the nation of Nuh, alayhi salatu wasalam. And the place of this, this nation was in the southern part of Arabian Peninsula. It's the worst type of desert today. It was a very fertile, fertile land. And now here, a planet, you know, these plants you know, which are encircling our earth, earth you know, these, uh, what they call them, the artificial satellites, they have discovered that city of Shaddad. Shaddad was the name of the king of Ad. And that city, you know, that has been discovered, it is lying buried in the desert deep. And that is a very bad desert now. But there was a very big civilization here, very strong nation. The southern part of the Arabian Peninsula. And he increased you very much in your statures and your body. And you must remember the bounties of Allah that have been upon you. So that you become successful. They said to him, Have you come to us that we should worship only Allah alone? What does it mean? They worshipped Allah also and other gods also. This is shirk. Shirk doesn't mean denying the existence of Allah. Shirk means you believe in a, in a big Allah, the great Allah, the Supreme Allah, and along with their Supreme Allah, small Aleha, small God, small Devis and Devtas. This is shirk. Now what was Hud saying? Don't worship anyone else except Allah. And this is what they are saying. You have come to us that we should give up all the worships of the other deities and other lords, other gods and goddesses, and worship Allah alone. And we leave those whom our forefathers have been worshipping. Fatina bimata iduna. So, okay, bring what you are threatening us with. You say that azab will come, punishment will come, bring that, that punishment. In kuntam in a if you are really true. Ta'ala qad waqa alaykum min rabbikum rich. Hazrat Ehud said to him, Indeed, curse and wrath from your Lord has already fallen upon you. Wa ghadab, his wrath has fallen upon you. You are disputing with me and arguing against me about the mere names that were invented by you or your forefathers. Who are these gods and goddesses? Where has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You believe in one Allah? Now give me the argument. Where Allah has told that I have these, you know, assistants also and these gods and goddesses also? Allah has told us. He created Malaika. Malaika are managing this world. They are the bureaucracy. They are the civil service of this, this universal government, divine government. But we don't worship them. Worship is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Although they are very exalted. They were created out of, out of light. They are very near to their Lord. Al-Malaikatul Muqarrabun. But we can't worship them. We, we worship only Allah. So he said, you have invented some names, you and your forefathers. Sultan. Allah has not sent down any, any authority for them, any certificate for them. Fantazaru inni muntazareen. So wait, I am also waiting with you. Fanjainahu The same thing happened. We saved him. 
and those who were with them, with him, who had believed in him. Bi rahmatim minna, by mercy from us, wa qatana dabir al ladina kazabu, and we cut the roots of that nation who had belied and refuted and rejected the revelations of Allah. Our ayat, wa ma kanu mu'minin, and they were not to believe. Wa ila samuda khaun saliha. Now, when this nation was destroyed. Hazrat Ehud alayhi salam and the Mu'mineen along, they migrated from this place. And they now settled in the northwestern corner of the Arabian Peninsula. This is called Hijr. This, you know, because Samud lived there and there are found even today. They used to carve out their homes in the stones. And I have visited that place myself also. And beautiful homes, very big halls, they are carved in, in you know, in granite uh, rocks. And the rocks are very strong. They are, they are standing up till now. Although I think they are at least 3,000 years old. Rather 4 or 5,000 years old. The same time as of Harappa and the eyes of Mohenjo-Daro. That is one time in which these civilizations were flourishing throughout the world. That is the time of Samud. Because much before Ibrahim. Ibrahim alayhi salam was nearly 4,000 years from today. So before him, so actually they are 5,000. And you know, they are remnants, you know. They are, they are present there. So this is the Samud. And when the Samud also went on the wrong, wrong path, then Allah sent to them, Hazrat Salih alayhi salatu wa salam. Wa samuda akhaun saliha. And to Samud we sent their brother Salih. Qala ya qawm ibudullah ma lakum ilahin ghairu. The same, the, the same call. You must be bondsmen to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have no Lord except Him. A clear sign has come to you from your Lord. They demanded it. Show us a miracle. This, you know, this rock, a pregnant she camel should come out at once from it. Like a ball from the blue. And it, this miracle was shown to them. This clear miracle has come to you from your Lord. Now this is camel of Allah. She camel of Allah. Lakum ayatan. And it is a sign for you. Fazaruha. Leave it alone. Ya taqul fil ard. That fear the Allah. That it may graze wherever it likes. In the, uh, on the earth of Allah. Wala tamasuha bisuin. Don't touch it with any ill intention. Bad intention. Faya khodakum azabun alim. Then you know a very painful torment will overcome you. And just remember, after the Aad were destroyed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them, made you the successors after Aad. And He has established you in this earth. In the plains, you are, you are building palaces and fortresses. And you are carving out homes in the mountains, in the rocks. Now because those palaces, they have vanished. 5,000 years, they can't be seen now. But the homes that they carved in the rocks, they are still there. And you know, you can see the, the pictures of that. Marana Madudi has included those pictures in his Tafim al-Quran. And you can find it in so many places. Faskuru ala Allah. So you must remember the bounties of Allah that have come to you. Walata sofil are the mufsideen. And don't, and don't go about in the earth making mischief. Qal al malahu ladina stagbaru min qawmihi. The same reply. The chiefs of the nation said to him, Lil ladina sudifu liman amana. And they said to whom? To those who people who were oppressed and they had believed in Hazrat Salih alayhi salam. Just as the slaves of Makkah. It's actually a mirror is being shown to what was happening at Makkah at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. History is repeating itself. Whatever you are doing today, the chiefs of Aad and chiefs of the Qom of the nation of Nuh and the chiefs of the people of uh, Saleh, they have all been saying the same things. They, they have all been doing the same things. So they said, those haughty people said to those people, meek peoples who had accepted the faith of Hazrat Saleh. Atalamuna anna Saleh and Mursalum min Allah. Do you know? Do you believe that Saleh has been sent from his Lord? 
قالو انا بما ارسل به مؤمنون they said you know yes we believe and we we believe in all that he had been sent with قال الذين استكبروا انا بالذي عملتم به كافرون and they replied with arrogance and haughtiness okay then what you believe in we deny it we repudiate it we reject it فاقروا الناقه and they killed the she camel وعطوا لهم ربهم and they defied their lord's command وقالوا يا صالح تنا بما تعدنا ان كنت من المرسلين and they said oh salih now bring to us that punishment that you said that if you kill this if you touch this camel this she camel with any bad intentions a very painful torment will come over you so bring it now in kunt min al mursalin if you are really a messenger sent from the lord fatakhath fa akhadat hum us wajfatu so an earth quake took over them over took them fasbahu fi darihim jasimin and they became in their dwellings lying dead in prostrating conditions fatawalla anhum he turned his back to him to them wa qala ya qaum laqad tablaqtukum risalata rabbi and he said oh my nation oh my people i had conveyed to you the messages of my lord wa nasatu lakum and i wanted to advise you sincerely to save you from this disaster walakin la tuhibbun an-nasihin but you don't like you don't love those people who advise you sincerely wa lutan in the same way we sent lut alai salatu wassalam now he is a contemporary of hazrat ibrahim alai salam hazrat ibrahim and they and lut were related he was nephew hazrat ibrahim was the uncle of lut and lut was nephew of ibrahim and hazrat lut was sent to these this trans jordan area now to today jordan this is the area intervening between palestine and iraq this was the area there was a very big civilization over here and two very big towns of sodom and gomora amura they called in arabic and english gomora gomora and sodom sodomy sodomy is from sodom sodomy because this was you know the most heinous thing that they were doing wa lut an is qala li qaumihi and we sent lut also and he said the same thing and along with that those things in addition he said to his nation ataatun al fahisha ta ma sabaqakum biha min ahad min al alamin are you doing and committing such a shameful act which no nation had done before you this is the most shameful what is that in nakul la taatun al rijal shawatan you approach men sexually min dunin nisa leaving aside women allah has created women for you that is the nature and you are approaching men males for your gratification sensual gratification sexual gratification bal antum qaum musrifun no you are people who have exceeded all limits of decency wa ma kana jawab qaumihi but there was no reply from his people illa an qalu akhrijuhum min qaryatikum innahum unasun yatatakharun they said oh turn them out from your town they are very pious people very clean and very pure it was a satire you know they are very clean people they shouldn't live with us turn them out fan jayda ho ahlahu we saved him and his family illa mrata except his wife kanat min alghabirin she was among those who lingered behind who remained behind bamtarna alayhi matara and then we sent a rain upon them matara and that rain was of not of water out of stones a rain of stones came fanzur kayfa kana aqibatul mujrimin so see and look what was the end and result of those people who were guilty بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America IONA is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. 
the obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. One, a Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. Two, a Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Three, a Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. Four, a Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.